Hi, Norm. Hi, Akko. How are you? Good, Baruch Hashem. Good. Good. You're in town for Pesach? No, we're going to uh, New York for um, first days and um, going to Houston for the second days. Oh, so, very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, we're going to get out on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you? We're uh, we're going to be here. Normally we go to Pico Robertson to my yeah. sister-in-law, but we're, okay. they're all coming here and I have all my kids will be home oh, very for nice. the first time in years. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Home. Yeah. Very exciting. Hello. Hello, Mario. Hi, Mario. Hi, guys. Getting ready for Pesa? Oh, yes. Yep. yep. Well, my house officially as of tomorrow is home and free. So I, I, if I want to eat somewhere, I have to eat outside. Right, right. The restaurants will outside, be... Not outside the house, outside in a in a coffee shop or something like that. Yeah. The restaurants will be busy, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody told me that their house was kosher le Pesach last um, Monday, a week ago from yesterday. I said, What are you eating for at that time? He's trying to manage. What can I say? Huh. Yeah. Yep. Oh, hello. Sorry. Yeah, what page are we on? Sorry? What page? 138? 221. No. 221. 221, yes. Hello, what page are we on, Mario? I just heard you. 221. Kranich, the Zuktir. Zwei, zwei, eins. Eins. Okay, thank you. Is that Yiddish or German? I just want to make sure. The last one is same. German. The same. Another word in Ames, right? Uh. Hi, Abe. Hello. Long time no see. Hello. Yeah, you, did you miss me? Hello, hello. hello. Where have you Hi. been? I just got home. I was uh, I was out. Out and oh. about. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Good 
Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I believe we're on two eighteen. Two twenty one. But if you want to go back to two eighteen, it's okay. Oh, no, we did it. We did. You're right. 221. Sorry. 221. Okay. We saw in source one that in addition to thunder and lightning, Chazal identified other natural phenomenon upon which a person should recite the bracha of Osemai Shabrashis. It says in Mishnah in Brachos, Alazikin, the Alazvos. Omer Baruch Shekocho Gvoroso Maleolam. Aleorim Valagvos, great mountains, Valayomim Valanaros, oceans and rivers, Valamidbaros, Omer Baruch Oisabreshis. Rabbi Omer Haroya Sayama Godol, if you see the ocean, Baruch Shaasa Sayama Godol, Bizman Shroor Leprokim. We'll see, we'll see what the Yamagadol is. And we'll see, it's when you see it intermittently, not on a regular basis. Now, Allah Zikin, says the Gemara Nasech the Brachos, my Zikin, Omer Shmuel, Koch V'deshavit, a comment. So Zikin is a comment, Haley's comment. Once every 76 years. Rashi describes the features of the comet an astronomical phenomenon of which a person would recite, Shekocho Grosso Male Olam. It demonstrates Hashem's might and strength. Koch V'deshavi, Koch V'ayori Kechetz. This is a star that descends like an arrow, Berakiyah Mimokam Lokam, from one place to another place. V'aruch Kashev, it's like a staff, Shehu Yoyre, that's being shot. V'nir Kemo Sheposeach Rakiyah. It looks, it looks like it's creating an opening in the sky. We have followed the translation of the Steinsaltz that Kochab Shavit refers to a comet. Many commentators, in fact, explain that the Kochab Shavit shoots like an air across the sky, or like a meteor, which is a formulation by the Shulchan Aruch as well. However, some commentaries understand that this is referring to a meteor, especially according to Rashi, who writes that it descends like an arrow due to this difference of opinion as well as the fact that both of these phenomena highlight the power of the Creator. Many Akronim rule that one recites the Baruch upon seeing either one. That's the Mishnah Brewer, the Kavachai, Malacha Brewer, the Bir Alacha. In the beginning of Shulchan Aruch, Rav Yosef Karo adopts this statement as Alacha, incorporating Rashi's explanation. He codifies the ruling to recite a Baruch upon feeling an earthquake or very strong winds. Allah zikin, who come in kochav ayore kechets ba'orach hashamayim like an arrow. Mimokal mimokal nimshach oro keshevet. Its light extends like a staff. Val radata aretz, an earthquake. Val aruchos shenish bubizaf, hurricane, strong winds. A kol echad meilu oimer bracha to Hashem. El kerem echolam oisem aisha breishis. It's the same. Last week we learned the same thing. It's a choice. Some say you make two, some say you make one, and that's enough. Rabbi Ezer Malamed clarifies some of the details. If you feel an earthquake, I feel a column of arch, you make a bracha. If you feel a trem a aftershock, the bracha The bracha that you make for the first one potters the exempts the next one. You took your mind off the earthquake and now you felt another one. 
Bishanes, you, you make another bracha. Rucha Sa'ara, strong winds. Aruchos Chazachos Vizuafos B'miuchad, that are very tornado or hurricane. Shabikochim Lakor Eitzim, they have the power to uproot trees. Ulach Ribatim Ru'uim, and to uproot houses. Yivar Shekocho Gvoroso Maleola. Vimbirch Maisa Maisa Brashis Yatsa. But winds are not that strong. The winds are strong enough that he could lift heavy objects. You make a bracha, but you say, The same storm. If one storm ends, a new storm begins, and you have strong winds, you can make a bracha on that as well. Shulchan Aruch codifies the ruling of the Mishnah to recite a bracha upon seeing mountains, rivers, and deserts. Ayamim naharos harim avos midbaros omer baruch osamay sabreshis. Although the Mishnah cited above states that a person recites a bracha on any such location, the Shulchan Aruch rules that this does not apply to each one. Whether one recites a bracha only on particularly large or impressive ones. You don't make a bracha on every river. The Torah mentions the Euphrates, the Tigris, the Lupras, Okay. Yaakov? The Mochidek of Lepras. You have to see the river in a place where the where the river has not been changed by human action. You see Mount Everest or you see uh, you know, you see something, a distinct mountain or hill, um, you would make a bracha. But Ernie, if you live, if you live next to a mountain, you don't say right, now, right now, it has to be a very, a very unique mountain. It's not a regular mountain. It's undistinct. Something that really denotes the power of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Okay. And let's see if they'll explain more. The Mishnah writes that although the Shukhrach limits the Brach on rivers to the four mentioned Tanakh, in truth, other exceptionally large river that certainly exists since creation are, are also included. Any river that is big as these four, and we know that they were there, we, we would assume that the Amazon, the Nile, the the Mississippi, perhaps. They were not formed later. Here the Pnina Lacha gives us some examples. The Gabi Norris and the Mushnei Torah, they gives us some examples. The Gabi Norris and the Mushnei Torah, they gives us some examples. The Gabi Norris and the Mushnei Torah, they gives us some examples. The Gabi Norris and the Mushnei Torah, they gives us some the human beings dredging the river, and shigdol v'achos kamo hapras shenikra gadol b'toyra. It has to be at least as big as the Euphrates. The kavachoy mishum avarchem al nars gadolim yoiser. Certainly, on bigger rivers, he says kidugmat hanilus, havolga, harain, ha amazon, ba Mississippi, aval al nars regilim kidugmas hayirak hayarkon. The Yarkon River, Yarden, ain't no varchim. Ki ain't no varchim because they're not so impressive. Concerning mountains, the Shukhrach merely states that the bracha should be recited by those which are distinct. What, what does that mean? This is discussed by a number of poskim. The Archa Shulchan writes that the criterion is obvious, and the same applies to rivers. I never posh to be in and around Gavos, Mishunim, Bikoveim. Unusual mountains that are really tall. Kimo Harare. Alp, Bahare Pyrenee, 
Vahar Kazbek, Vare Ararat, certainly the Himalayas, the Chadom, Vanaras Kamkin, Shugadorlis, Shayshem Shemba, all the people talk about them in the world. Vlonaras Katan Shaylem Shemba Olam. Rav Ben Sina Bashol writes similarly that the Brachos recite upon large mountains. However, he goes well beyond the rough standard applied by the Rachashulchan to include the tallest peak in Israel, Har Hermon. He does paskin that you say a bracha on the chermon. These poskim do identify definition for the concept of distinct, mainly size, but they do not provide a clear standard by which they can be assessed. So while one may safely include the Himalayas in the category, yeah. it's not clear what minimum height is included, especially according to the Shulchan. More recent posts have addressed this issue and significantly have ruled, ruled that although there is a qualification, it's not specific height. Thus, the Piske Shuba rules that it's a function of how much the onlooker is amazed by what he sees. So let's say, uh, let's say you see Mount Whitney, just you know, not that far away from here. It is the tallest peak in uh, in the United States. I would think if, if according to the uh, Ben Sion Abishol, you certainly would. The Hermon, it, why? Because it's the tallest mountain in Israel, then certainly Kavachoymer, what you're describing regarding Mount Whitney, or certainly Mount McKinley, those are unusual. They're known for how big they are. And and uh, yeah. the question would be Mount Baldy, which is local here. Yeah. You know, but Mount Whitney is interesting because if you fly to Seattle, you see it in the plane. So do you have to make the brach? I assume you do. If you see it from the plane, what does it matter? Yeah. Yes. You're impressed by it. You're amazed by it. What about that other mountain in Washington that, that blew up? St. Helens, Mount St. Helens. Yeah, Mount St. Helens. 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 Or Mount Rainier is also too. very, very attractive. Mount Rainier is beautiful. And and tall. Yeah. So these are distinct names. Everyone knows them. And Mount St. Helens showed the Koach of Hashem with the with the with the volcano erupting. The Piske Chuva says, Mistaber, the Arnul Firos Ene Adam al Pimidas is Paluso. It's based on how amazed he is. Kafir Galoli Rosarim Gvoim. Regarding that are tall and distinct on a global scale, like the Alps, the Arat Mountains, according to everybody, you would make the bracha. The Pnina Alocha offers similar criteria, stating that mountains must be much higher than their surroundings and the hills must have a distinctive shape. But they do not need to be as tall as the mountains mentioned by the Rachel Shulchan or Lutzion. He mentions other mountains found in Eretz Israel. I'm wondering about El Capitan in Mammoth, not in Mammoth, in Yosemite. Very unique, very distinct, very special. Could be. The Gabi Horim had nice you go in the Miyucha, the Yachas the Sviva Tav. The mountains have to be tall in relation to what's around them. A hill, it must have a particular striking shape, such as the striking cliffs in the Judean desert. I would think based on this criteria, we would include El Capitan. The various about... cliffs that you see in Hare Yehuda. The regular mounts, ain't Levarek. Variyat Gamla, that's up near the uh, the Ramata Golan, the Arbel, and Metsada, and Sartava, Navarchim, Metnei Shem Mir Amiuchad. They their shape and appearance is unique. The Chaim Navarchim Al Hartavor, Shegovo Marshim. Its height, at least in relationship to what's around it, is very noticeable. So what about things? What about things like the Grand Canyon? I mean, it's not a, it's not it goes up, it doesn't go up, but it goes down, and it's an amazing 
actual phenomena. I agree. But I would assume you do but the it same says thing. Harim, harim ugvals. It doesn't say, uh, you know, aim amek. They, we'll how did they ever saw it, such a thing in the time? In the time of the Gemara, they probably didn't even they didn't have such a thing. They had great mountains. even though it existed. You're saying, yeah, could be. Certainly, if you were on the in the in at the bottom of of the Grand Canyon, looking up, it would it would fulfill the criteria. According to Rabbi Malamin, one who stops to look at the Judean desert or the Negev desert in Israel would recite a bracha, though traveling by car through the area without stopping would not warrant a bracha. The same would apply when traveling through other dairy areas, such as Arizona or Nevada in the United States. I would think also uh, that Death Valley is an amazing desert. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Earlier we saw that the Mishnah lists seas among those places over which one would recite Osa Maishra Breshis. But according to Rav Yehuda, a unique brach is recited only upon seeing the Yamagato. Now, which body is Yamagato? It's one of the most contentious issues in the category of brach spun wonders of nature. Yaakov, Yelen, and myself were witness to this machlokas, and we'll get to it um, soon. According to the Rosh, the Yamagadol refers to the Mediterranean Sea, but not to, let's say, the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. Not to the Mediterranean Sea, but to an ocean, the other way around. No, according, yeah, according to the Rosh, it refers not to the Mediterranean Sea, but to an ocean. Sha'ata Yamagadok. Remember, the Rosh lived in Toledo, Spain. He was certainly aware of the Mediterranean, and he was aware of the Atlantic. Sha'omer Bemisha, Shemabarchalav, Ruksha Sati Yamagadok. Im Huyam Okyanis, if it's an ocean. O Imu Yamagadol Shalanu. Sha'ovrimbo le Eretz Yisrael and Mitzrayim. He asked, is it the ocean or the Mediterranean which we pass when traveling to Israel or Egypt? It would seem that the Rosh repeatedly refers to the Mediterranean as our sea because he lived in Toledo, Castile, in the Iberian Peninsula, on the western end of the Mediterranean Sea. Accordingly for the Rosh, the Mediterranean was unquestionably our great local sea. Incidentally, in that time, before Europe discovered the Americas, it was typical to describe all the world's oceans as a single ocean. And the Rosh describes the ocean this way as well. So the Yamagadol refers to the sea and the Okeanus refers to the ocean. And the Rosh is learning that the Yamagadol is the Mediterranean. Yerushu Yamakyanis Davka. But he then says the Yamagadol is probably the ocean itself. Even though Yamshalano, which refers to the Mediterranean, is called Yamagadol, it's the western border of Eretz Israel. It's known as RC. Eretz Yisrael is not bordering an ocean. But here, it is thought of as the ocean. Just generally, He's speaking of the ocean. The low poly in Tanakama, the way the Rosh is learning, is Rav Yudha doesn't argue with the Tanakama. He's just defining what the Tanakh referred to. The Tanakama Iri Bishar Kolayomi. The Tanakama is referring to different seas. 
the kami yamim dolin yesh le bolam. Lots of people remember the yam agadol yesh le bracha b'fnei atzmo. That the Mediterranean has its own special bracha. Now the Beis Yosef cites the Rosh, but he does not rule in accordance. It says v'la yam agadol v'hu ayam she ovrim bolay Yisrael mitzrayim ovrim bracha toshel kena malchum oisay yam agadol. That when you're traveling from Israel to Egypt, which is the Mediterranean Sea, you say this brach. Interestingly, the Minchas Yitzchak suggests a solution which attempts to satisfy both the views of the Rosh, which is accepted by many Achorin since Osa Maisabratius is more general, and of the Shulchan Aruch. According to the solution, when seeing the Mediterranean, a person should recite Osa Maisabratius. And then add after a very brief pause, Sha'asa et Yamagadol. In this way, a person might technically succeed in saying both variations of the bracha without risking reciting a bracha levatolo. Says the Minchas Yitzva, Dayan Wise, he was the Avbezdin of the Eid Haredis in Yushalayim. Nirlan is Daiti after Ladina Nachol of Archois of Meister Breshis. When you see the Mediterranean, the bracha kolalas kamo shakoni abid shakoni abid varo be brachas apirus. I am the same Mishnah bracha or Chaim Shah. Me kol makom latzeis kam gandei ashulchan aruch v'shar poskim yeshlomer toch kudei dibur within a short frame of oisam ayshabeshes kam tevos osha sayam agadol. That's how we now. This solution is also recommended in the work of zos bracha. However, the compromise of the Minchas Yitzchak is not encouraged by Allah's Lord. Rav Vadya Yosef writes that one should recite Shasat Yamagadol on seeing the Mediterranean in accordance with the ruling of the Shulchan Aruch. He also writes that if one sees the Mediterranean and later sees the Kinneret, one recites an additional bracha voice of my Shabbat by the Kinneret since it's a separate body of water. Haroa Sayam, O Echad Me'arba Naros Shabbat Mikra, the Tigris, the Euphrates, Mavar, Borchat Hashem, Oisam, Oisam, Breshis. Haros Ayam Atichon, if you see the Mediterranean, Shubachoyfi, Eret Yisrael, at the beach, when you go to the beach, in Israel, Mavar, Borchat Hashem, Oisam, 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 Haros Ayam Atichon, if someone saw the Mediterranean, Ubirch, Shasat, Yam Agadol, Va'achar Kach, Ra'at, Yam Asa, Kineret, Choyzer, Mavar, Oisam, Oisam, Breshis. Later on, you would repeat, Oisam, Oisam, Breshis. The Yakut Yosef writes that one should not recite the bracha at all upon seeing the Mediterranean based upon the Mogan of Rome and others. The reason that Rav and others do not accept the compromise of the Minchas Yitzchak may be because if someone changes the form of the bracha within the brief moment of Tach Kedai Dibur, it's effectively negating what was just spoken. In that case, it essentially cancels the words Oysa Maizabreshis such that there's no advantage in reciting them at all. Regardless, it would be unusual for a person to plan to correct his own bracha, and such a, bra a practice would seem to undermine the bracha entirely. The question of identifying Ayam Agadol is also discussed by Vizosa Bracha, where the author rules that one should recite Sha'asat Ayam Agadol upon oceans, accordance with the Rosh, many other poskim. But he accepts the suggestion of Minchas Yatz, Yitzchak, with respect to the Mediterranean Sea. A number of important issues are also dealt with in this source, including a, a reciting a bracha when viewing the ocean from an airplane, reciting the bracha a second time when viewing another ocean, and whether to recite a bracha on other seas in Israel, such as the Red Sea and the Dead Sea. What I was referring to about Yaakov and I, we had we traveled to Spain and we went to Gibraltar. At Gibraltar, there is the nexus between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic Ocean. Mark Shapiro quoted to us a shita, and now we understand the shita, that when you make the bracha and you're seeing this confluence of the Mediterranean between the, you know, the pillars of the rock of Gibraltar, Gibraltar and, 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 and the coast of Africa, the Mediterranean flows into the ocean, 
that's Dafka, the best place in the world to say the bracha on the Yama Gadol because it fulfills everybody's shita. Because you, you're seeing the Mediterranean and the ocean at, at one spot. Do you remember that, Yaakov? I do, yeah. Interesting. And we went up, remember we is. went up, we went yeah. up to a special cliff yeah. where we could see it. And and he, and we learned this sugya here. Right. And I mean uh, you don't you don't actually know where the point is. It's not like you see something, but you know that it's somewhere. But you see there. the confluence. When we were looking, you could see the Mediterranean flowing into the Atlantic. You, you, we, we, we could see it. Yeah, there isn't the exact demarcation. But if I remember, the color of the, the waters were different as one was flowing into the other. That's true. Yeah, they were. So let's learn the Vizosa Bracha. Haroe Esyama Okyainis. If you see the ocean, Amakiv is Kolom Klo. And he says the Okyanis Atlanti, Hasheket, which is the Pacific, Ahodi, the Indian Ocean. I mean, in essence, it's all one body of water because they're all connected. If you see the Mediterranean, and then following the Minchas Yitzchak, he says, "Nachon Osiv Toch Kedei Dibur Kamatevu Shasa Et Hayam Agadol." As you, but as you can see, not everybody held that you could you could say. Asa. Oseh or Sha'asa, Hayama Gadol, when you when you're looking at the Mediterranean. He only says it's a masturbation. That's why going to Gibraltar, you fulfill that as well. I am supervarchoisamaisabrashis. When you see the Red Sea, Ainot Sarih Losif Ose Yamagadol. I'm the same Sota Brit Lach Israel. Those of us who travel from the US to Israel. When you see the Atlantic, well, many of us, if we take a flight which is at night, you won't see it. When you get close to Israel, you see the Mediterranean. You're traveling from Israel to America. And when you you first see the Mediterranean. And Birech al Yamatichon Ose Maise Breshis, Nira She'ein Lachzor Levarach Al Okyanis Ose Yamagadol. You don't make a second bracha when you see the Atlantic. Bifrat, Im Kishivirch Al Yamatichon Ose Yamagadol Ose Yamagadol Toch Kedai Dibor Ose Yamagadol. Certainly, if you added that phraseology on the Mediterranean thing of Ose Yamagadol. Yam Kinert V'yam Amelech, There are those that pass to say, There's certain people are in doubt. The Pnine Alocha writes that the standard practice is to recite the Broch of Shasai Yamagadol upon seeing oceans and also my celebration upon seeing the Mediterranean. He also prefaces his discussion by explaining that one recites a bracha upon sites considered moving by most people, which includes all seas and oceans. Let's look at the two fit notes first, 15 and 16. Although Rabbi Vadi Yosef was quoted earlier as ruling that one recites a bracha twice after seeing the Mediterranean Sea and later the Kinneret, some Akron including the Zasa bracha Quoted here, hold that one does not recite a second bracha after seeing the Mediterranean later the Atlantic. One reason given is that two bodies of water connected and may be considered as one. Another reason given is that we have seen postkim are divided as to which of the two brachos 
should be recited upon the Mediterranean and which should be recited upon the Atlantic Ocean. Thus, some opinions will argue that the bracha one recited upon one of them would always already exempt the other. Therefore, due to the uncertainty, one does not recite the second bracha. Rav Leezer Malamid rules that one recites the bracha upon seeing the dead in the Kineret. Rav Yosef Tzvi Rimon in the Sulamot article brings that. Rav Shon Zabin Arbach also rules that a person should recite also my celebration upon the Kineret. Interesting, Rav Rimon also rules that it would be appropriate to recite Shachianu when a person sees the water level of the Kineret is high and has been filled by substantial rainfall. In footnote, in footnote 14, he addresses the question of seeing seeing um, these from a plane. One can, one even, according to, the, well, the Pnei Aloha said, certainly, he, he said, if you're traveling and you see it, then, yeah, you, you, from a plane. According, even one who sees the Osher Sea from an airplane recites the Baruchah, since one can still appreciate its magnitude. Many post schemes share the same opinion. What if someone lives at the beach? <laughs> you say it every day? I just do it once? What do you do? Remember, we said, if you haven't seen the ocean in 30 days, oh, 30, uh, so if you're there, you wouldn't keep on making it. Right. right. But if, if you went away for 31 days, you, you come, come back, back you make the bracha again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mi toch yeah. Nofim Marshimim. So this brings what Yaakov was talking about the Grand Canyon. If you see a beautiful view, Nitan Lit Bonen Bigdula Toshala Bore, and it makes you think about the Creator, the Loma Lafon of Brachashul Shva, the Ficha Tiknu Chachom Sharua Yomim, Naharos, Harim, Vos, Midborius, Yavore. Referring to oceans, rivers, mountains. If, even if you're not emotional, if most people are moved, and then so if someone is blind, you would also say it because most people are moved by it. Yeah, but isn't it like a birchas I think you have to see it. I don't know. It's, I mean, a blind person makes a bracha before he eats because he's going to be nana from it. But you've got to see it to be, to be, to be, to be moved by it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're probably right, but it's an interesting question because yeah, if you see it okay. and you're not impressed, you're not impressed. But you still have to make one else is. So yeah, but you, you but, bracha, but I think but the, you trigger, have to see it. the trigger is seeing it. I think. Yesh tamid marshim, yam tamid marshim. An ocean or a sea is always striking. He says, on every, the Caspian Sea, Lake Superior, basically, I think he's saying, you say it on every every lake and sea. But as long as it's got a lot of water. And enomai say adam. So Lake Havasu. And Lake Mead, those are those are man-made lakes. I know Lake Mead was created when they created the Hoover Dam. You would not make a brach on that. You do make a brach on Mediterranean and the Red Sea. The Dead Sea and the Kinneret. It was made a dam. He was very big. The bracha is made to praise Hashem who made it. So the Panama Canal. Now, I've been to the Panama Canal. You see the Pacific Ocean. So you make the bracha on the Pacific Ocean. But you wouldn't make it on the Panama Canal because it's man-made. The oceans that surround the beaches. 
Vanam yesh sovrim. There are opinions that Yama Gadol or Yama Tichot that consider the another example of Yama Gadol is the Mediterranean. Shenikra Gadol mitnei Malatoshu samach leretz Yisrael. The godless of the Mediterranean is that it's connected to Israel. Oh, the name Alatoshu Samuklaj or near Eretz Israel. Oh, the name Shaf Yamim Begodal Shalon at Shavim Gdoyli. There are other bodies of water that are important and are just as big. Ulam the Data Bay Poskim, Ralak Rak Alau Kanyus Mavarkim Shasat Yamagadol. Vilu Alayamati Hon Mavarkim Asamash Brashis, like you make on the Kinneret and the Red Sea and the other places. And he says, V'kach no'agim. Okay, so that's important, uh, important machlokas. One second, let me just get something to drink. Susie's, my daughter, Susie's not here, she's at my daughter's. One second, one second. Ernie, yes. Ernie, yes. I yes, wonder what, what broche you would make when you see when the two oceans meet, like in on Cape Point, you see the Indian and the Atlantic Ocean meet. So they, they consider they consider all of these oceans one ocean. One ocean. One ocean. Yeah, Think about but, it, they're all connected. Yeah, but you see a different you see a line and you see a different color. Oceans are I actually, know, but but the those all three oceans are considered one ocean. The Zosa Brocha said that. Haroet Yama Kyanis, Hamakivit Kola Olam Kulo, How Kyanis Atlanti, Hashakait, Hahodi, meaning the, the, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian. It's like one ocean, Lahura. Okay. What I mentioned about the joining of the Mediterranean and the and the Atlantic is because there, even on the Mediterranean, you'd be able to say Hayama Gadol, because it's connected to the Atlantic Ocean. You're seeing the Atlantic Ocean, it wouldn't be a problem according. So there you resolve this machlokas aposkim about one group of, of poskim say on the Mediterranean, you only say oisemaisabrachis. The other group says no on the Mediterranean. You say Ali Amagadol. So many many people, when they stand on on the beach at Netanya, will not say the bracha Ali Amagadol when they look at the Mediterranean. But when they're at that junction between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, they will say that bracha there. And Lachora, when Walter is saying that you go down to the beach at Cape Town. And you see the junction between the two oceans. Lachor, from what we've learned tonight, you would say one bracha, but you would say the Yamagadol bracha. We also brought a posek that said, if you saw, if you were flying, and you saw one ocean, then you saw another ocean, you wouldn't have to make you admit the one covers the other one. Okay, bracha on a rainbow. Among the brachas triggered by sights, right? You got to see it. Is the bracha recited upon a rainbow? As opposed to other phenomenon, which recognize Hashem as the creator of the world and the source of its forces of nature, this bracha responds to the symbol of the rainbow described in the Torah. After the Mabu. This is the covenant. As Kashti, this rainbow, Nosati Be'anan, I place it in the cloud. Vaya Ba'anani Anan 
Allah Aretz. I will cause clouds to come. Venera Sarkesh has been on. You're going to be able to look through the prism of the clouds as it refracts the sunlight. And you're going to see the rainbow in the cloud. I will remember my covenant with the humankind, with every living creature, that I will not bring another mob. So Chazal, there was a debate over the proper response to the appearance of the rainbow. So he should fall on his face. This is a posseg in Yecheskel. They, they cursed, in Eretz Yisrael, they cursed people who did that minig because it looks like you're bowing down or worshipping the rainbow. But the Gemara contends, you'd certainly make a bracha. My mavar. Baruch Zoycher Abris. Vemasizatan Rabbi Shmuel B'not Rabbi Yechon Barbuk Oimer that the bracha is bracha to Hashem Kerem HaCholam Ne'eman Bibrito V'kayim B'mamaro Therefore, Amrav Papa Hilkach Ne'emel Tavayu We say both Nuschois Bracha to Hashem Kerem HaCholam Zoycher Abrit he fulfills his word. Although not explicitly mentioned in the Gemara, it's clear that one recites a proper formal bracha, which includes Shem and Malchus. Not just Baruch HaToh Melech, you know, Baruch HaToh Melech HaOlam. No, you would do it with Shem and Malchus. Vishashalta, in the Shilas and Truvis of the Rosh, somebody sent him a Shaila. These blessings on the sea or the rainbow, Shein must be with Gemara Mishum Achas Shem and Malchus. When the Gemara discusses what Bracha doesn't say, doesn't mention the name of Hashem in Melech. So they asked the Rosh in Tzorech Shem You have to say a full bracha. Says the Rosh Dalacha, you should know. Call Rabbi Sinu Kasvu came. All the rabbis wrote yes. Vegan Noagim Kaf. That's our custom. Laskir Bahem Shem Umalchus. There ain't bracha below Shem Umalchus. There's no bracha without Shem Umalchus. The Lama Yishtanu Bracha Seilu Mikol Shar Brachos. Why should this bracha be different than any other bracha? The Gemara Kotzer Nusach Abroch Moshe Kotzer Biyam Vakeshet. When it describes the bracha on the ocean, the Chiyotzevim Lo Yiskir Biyam Shem Malchus Avol Pi Should Tzorich Laz Kir Biyam. You do have to mention the name of Hashem. Notably, while a bracha becomes required by the sight of a rainbow, the Locha also cautions that a person should moderate the way he looks at a rainbow. That's brought in the tour in the Beis Yotzev commentary on the tour. And there's a Gemara, there's a discussion of the Gemara Chagig about that. Whoever does not show concern for the honor of a Kodesh Baruch Hu deserves never to be born. My need. You shouldn't stare at the rainbow. Rabbi Yitzhak says, It refers to someone who transgrit. Commits a chet, and you in hiding in secret because you don't think anybody's looking. Well, that's no cover for a Kodesh Baruch Hu sees everything, so you're lacking cover for Kodesh Baruch Hu. But what is this lacking of cover to a Kodesh Baruch Hu if you mistakel bakeshes, mistakel bakeshes, staring? You know what? It's like staring at the likeness of Hashem. So it's dishonor to stare at it. That's a pasuk in Yechezkel. Actually, that pasuk is in the in the in the parak of the Meiser Merkava. 
which is the haftar that we lane on the first day of Shulis. Shulchan Aruch adopts the halach in accordance with the view of Rav Papa, as understood by the Rosh. What's more, he also adopts the stringent view of Masech HaGiga. Haroah catches, if you see the rainbow, Oimer, Baruch HaTar Shalkein HaChalom, Zohar Abris, without the Vav, because the Gemara said Ve Nema. Here it's without it. Nema on the breach of a kind of Mamre. Austerly stock of Bobby Oyster. He brings the halacha that was brought in the Gemara Chagiga that you shouldn't stare at it. Clearly, the rainbow is a complicated symbol. Its appearance is aesthetically pleasing and impressive, but it is so divine that you shouldn't stare at it. Moreover, the Gemara also relates to the appearance of the rainbow as a sign of guilt. As the commentaries explain, the rainbow indicates that the world is worthy of severe punishment and is being spared only in the merit of Hashem's covenant with Noah. So if you see a Keshet, it's not a good thing. Apparently, it's in this vein that the Mishnah writes that one should not call attention to the fact that there's a rainbow in the sky. If you happen to see it, you make the bracha, but you shouldn't point it out to people. This is not something, you, oh, tell your friend, oh, you know, there's a, call him up, there's a rainbow out there, go make a bracha. No. It's, it's not proper to stare at it, so keep it quiet. However, the Yakut Yosef does not object to telling someone that a rainbow is visible, and his father, Rabbavadio, agreed. The Yakut Yosef mentions a number of other important details concerning the bracha upon seeing a rainbow, including seeing only half of it and seeing its reflection in the mirror. Pretty rare to see a complete rainbow. Most of the time we see, you know, just parts of it. You can tell your friend. Not like the Mishnah Baruch. Even you only see part of it, you make the bracha. You're walking on the road and you see a puddle of water. Sometimes you see a rainbow there. Then the Ain Rasakesh's Basman may she is the Dava Hamastil Rasakesh, or let's say something is blocking, you can't the Khena Roy Sakesh's Der Rei, or you see it through the window of his home or a car. I'm sorry, Ray is a mirror. You shouldn't see it. Avali in Roy Sakesh's Der Halon Beto Machonik. You see the rainbow through the window of your car or house, and of course, you can be Mavare. Even though there's a a barrier of a glass. Now, in contrast to the Yaakov Yosef's position, that you recite the bracha even when you only see part of the rainbow, the Bir Alocha, which is the Mishnah Brura, was in doubt. Lon is bar in being in Davka Shiru, Bitmunat Keshet, Duke Chatzikor Nagula, or Filu Mixas Bimenatai. He says the sources don't tell us if you have to see the whole thing. Some contemporary poskim rule that due to this suffix of the bir alocha, one should not recite a bracha upon seeing only part. The Vizosa bracha writes, and even according to this opinion, one may still recite the bracha if only a small portion of the rainbow is missing. Others write that if the rainbow is complete, but the individual cannot see the entire thing because there's obstructions, he may recite the bracha. That's how Rav Yosha Rav Karelitz rule. Some agree with the Yaakut Yosef that one should recite the bracha even upon seeing only a partial rainbow. The Mishabur writes that one can recite a bracha on another rainbow even within 30 days, similar to the brachos recite about lightning and thunder. In the case of the rainbow bracha, even if you see another one within 30 days, you can repeat it. Not like the other ones, where once every 30 days is enough. The Kana Kesha Shabir Khalaf, Khalaf, that one went away. Valachlov, the Dhamma the Birchus Rain was similar to the Thunder one. I'm gonna stop here.
We still have unusual brachos to complete. We'll probably do that next week. Now, next week is Pesach. Next week is Pesach, but hang on. Hang on. So Tuesday night will be Motzei Pesach, right? Correct. Correct? The second Tuesday night. Yeah. Right. The first day is Tuesday and Wednesday. The last days are Monday and Tuesday, right? Correct. Right. Right. So we'll. Yeah, but Yontif comes out. Hey, Yontif comes out late. Late? No, we're not going to learn because we normally learn at eight. It's not going to be over till yeah. late forty-five. We have to put away right. the stuff. Late. So, so I think we'll just take a hiatus for two weeks, and then just then there's a filas mincha, filas myriv, and kriya shmalamita, which is how or how. The first part of Orachim ends before you get into Dine Shabbos. Hmm. And then I have volumes 16 and 17 in my home for those that want to pick up both volumes. And otherwise I'll send them with with uh, with my son-in-law because my son-in-law Jake will be with us for Pesach. Any questions, comments, haaros? Which bracha do you make first when you see a leprechaun at under a rainbow? <laughs> on seeing an unusual person or on seeing the rainbow? Very it's a good word. Let's we're gonna get we're gonna have a simon on what bracha do you make when you see unusual people? Uh huh. Okay. Well, I saw this coming see, up. Yeah. Well, let's see what takes kadima. I think it's gonna be a good question. Okay. All right. Looking it's forward. More, more interesting. What was that? What's that? What's that? More interesting to see when you see the pot of gold at that right in the bottom of the uh, right. Uh, of course, Walter brings that up. Of course, yes, of course, clearly a total on You have to share it with your friends. Ernie, why wouldn't you make a bra? Why? Why did they distinguish from like not making a, a bracha on rain, for example, when you make it on thunder and lightning? Okay, so first of all, we can answer that not all rain. Well, rain certainly shows the power. I was first going to say, you know, rain isn't always good. Rain usually is good, right? But not always. Well, you you you, it, you say it's good, especially when you make a uh, you know. Uh, Apparently, rain is. Bracha, you you say it's filler for rain, right? So it's got to be good, right? But you notice these are very these are unusual things. It's not every day that we hear thunder and lightning. It's certainly not. So you notice it's when it's when these are oh, used. And maybe rain is considered too regular. Because, well, so that's what oh, so I, I just learned that by Sarah way. while you were discussing it. But then the lacha is more than 30 days. And certainly in California, sometimes we don't get rain for six or seven months. So you would think California is a great place to say a bracha for rain. But, but by the way, in South Africa, you had thunder and lightning every time it rained where we lived. You know, it's not, it doesn't really demonstrate the power, you know, it, it, thunder is, is, it has this incredible noise, lightning has this incredible visual impact, so there's a, a demonstration of power. Rain, while certainly it's a but, gift from the Rav it doesn't intrinsically sort of demonstrate the great power it's, of, it's of distinctive. God. Yeah, but is, si, is if, the word that was used, distinctive? Distinctive. So, Sai, if you have severe rains with hurricane, her, we said if you have rains with a lot of wind, then you would make that bracha. I mean, you don't have a hurricane without rain. Right. The, 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 so then that, like what Yaakov is saying, the, the power, the unusual, the unique, the uniqueness of it. It's a good, it's a good ha'ara. Yeah, but by the way, when in places where it never rains, like now in Dubai, it's flooding. It never rains there. It's a huge in Dubai. Everything's come to a standstill. Apparently. Death Valley, same thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good night. Okay. Very good. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.